Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signar. We are live, and I'm with BJ Gay, that surprise witness, and I'm so happy to have her here because we are going to fact check a couple things. There's been some stories out there of stuff, and I wanted to try and get her you know, legal expertise on this matter. Uh, the first of which is Brittany. Is she in some sort of secret Hawaiian conservatorship? I've seen some people and believe Brittany sort of putting this out there and I saw it and I wanted to sort of talk about it. Is this something we should be worried about? Is this a nothing burger? Let's fact check that. Also, uh, there's a story that's brewing that, you know, I want to, I want to be fair about it because uh, this is sort of come and disappeared. Uh, but Hank William Jr. Son, Sam claims he's in a conservatorship. Uh, and he posted a very bizarre video with uh, cards that uh, BJ actually alerted me to. And then I looked into it. I know she posted. You did post your video or you didn't post your video? It's come. It's going to premiere tonight. OK, so it's at premier- six around 6 p.m. Eastern. Perfect. You can check out her full coverage of it and everything. She probably has more than I'm going to even have here because the video has been pulled, et cetera. But basically him saying, I want to I want out of this conservatorship and then promptly removing it and saying, no, uh, guys, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Leave me alone. Don't talk about this. And it, and it sort of begs the question. I just wanted to have a conversation with BJ. I like, and I even asked her because we talked privately, but I'm like, are all conservatorships bad? Like, should we immediately jump and rally the troops when we hear someone's in a conservatorship? And I thought we had a pretty good conversation about it that I want to share with you guys. So that's today's plan. So happy to have you here. How you been? For those who are uh, just tuning in now, uh, BJ, what, you've been making a lot of content, I see, right? Yeah, I have been. I have, I've been taking this new supplement, not sponsored, paid for it with my own money. And I feel like it's giving me like energy and the will to do things. So I have been recording and editing and posting videos like so many like I'm even putting them just like out on Patreon because I don't want to like clog up the YouTube pipeline you know you have to space your videos <laughs> I'll be posting like six videos a day so yeah I'm just yeah I'm having fun just like making videos you know sometimes you get those spurts of energy that's me mm-hmm. right now good for you that's the best I, yeah you got to just keep making keep making keep making uh, and uh, good for you. Uh, all right, well, I want to get to this first topic, which was this came in from Thea, and we've actually been I've been messaged Thea to make sure we have more information about what this is. Uh, but this is where I sort of saw this, and uh, the 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 issue here is that Britney Spears is a conservative person in Hawaii with Jody Montgomery listed as a conservator. Case was updated mm-hmm. in October first, twenty twenty one, but remains as an active case. No available records show that the state of Hawaii has been notified of the termination. Conservatorship of the person was registered in March 5th, 2020. Only available filings is copies of Jody's letters of the temporary conservatorship of the person, which is a requirement to file when registering conservatorship out of state. At the day of Jody's appointment as conservator in 2019, which was filed by Geraldine Weil and Gerald Cohen, she also filed a notice to extend the conservatorship to 12 states, including Hawaii. I also found two arrest records in the name of Britney Spears that was filed in 2021 in Honolulu. Uh, Both of the cases went to court. Party ID shows different numbers, but the person who was arrested twice mentioned that the same birthday as Brittany. Uh, first arrest, they go in these arrests, uh, allegedly was in the structure of a park during closing hours. Uh, it also reports that his this is supposedly a male. Uh, this is super confusing. Second yeah. arrest, same information, a non-local name, Brittany, with the same birthday, but they checked out the box mail. Again, a citation for being in a park during closed hours occurred in the same area in Honolulu. Jody's lawyer, who was involved in the conservatorship of the person in Hawaii, Raymond K. Okoda, studied law at UCLA in LA. Another coincidence is that Jody's lawyer's office is located in Honolulu, and it's a five-minute walk from the arrest areas. Uh, and so here's Melcher, because uh, our you know our own friend here, colleague. Thank you for the records. Conservatorship orders from California were registered in Hawaii, so the conservators would be recognized if they needed to act in Hawaii. Rosengart should file notices where the conservatorship was registered that the conservatorship is terminated. So uh, we were sort of saying that's what he said. <coughs> your your take was sort of like yes, this is true, but as Christopher is saying, you know, that just needs to be terminated. So should we be worried? Is this something that should be on the docket sooner? Do you see any, any things in here that alert you of, uh Oh, something's up. So I'm learning every day, just like, you know, most of y'all are, it just so happens. I also have this legal background. So I know a couple other ways to fill in blanks. So when I first saw these tweets and other reports that Brittany was still in an active conservatorship in Hawaii, it also kind of bothered me, frightened me, concerned me. Um, now I do follow another lawyer account. I'll just like hold up my phone. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but her Twitter name is it's the law bitch at law bitch. And she actually is a practicing, um, family and probate attorney, family law and probate attorney. And she said something else. I would just like to add. She said, 
conservatorships are established and terminated where the conservatee is domiciled. And that's like legal terminology for where the conservatee lives most of the time. Any other states that recognize the conservatorship must also recognize when it is terminated. There is no way a conservatorship for Brittany can be maintained in another state after you have the order in California. So she does another tweet and she says, feel free to continue researching court docs from those different states because we will we still may find evidence of wrongdoing. But I don't want anyone to think a conservatorship can be enforced in any state at this time. So it seems to be because um, Brittany doesn't actually live in Hawaii most of the time. She lives in California, that there is no way to um, enforce this conservatorship. But some questions do come up in my mind, like, what if Brittany does start staying in Hawaii most of the time? Will that turn into her state of domicile? Because she does go there all the time. I mean, since she's gotten out of the conservatorship, I think she's been to Ma- to Maui three times. And so it's like, I hope that they're not trying to do any funny business. Now, I do believe Matthew Rosengart needs to go ahead and send notice to Hawaii or to the courts of Hawaii in Honolulu, I guess it looks like, that the conservatorship has been terminated. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows the conservatorship has terminated. But again, like Christopher said, I think that Matthew does need to go ahead and send those documents in. And in any other state where this conservatorship might be somehow active on paper, because I just don't want them to be able to try any funny business. But as far as issuing a conservatorship, the answer is no. And legally, the conservatorship is not enforceable in Hawaii because her state of domiciliary is California. But the other question that remains in my mind is, does Brittany know that? Right. Can they bring this to Brittany and say, we're still in a conservatorship here and you have to listen to us. Like, does she know that? I don't know. I mean, hopefully Matthew Rosengart, and I have no reason to believe he's not, is giving her good advice. And and I'm hoping he hurries up and ties up the loose ends on this. I understand he has a lot of other stuff going on, which is probably why he hasn't gotten around to doing this. But it does seem like it's important for him to do that, according to these other two lawyers on Twitter. Right. So. It's it's something, but it's not really a worry yet, it, and we should assume it's on the docket to be removed and just keep our eye to make sure that it is removed seems to be what this really is about. And, you know, it's a similar concern that I know Christopher had when, when she was still technically under the conservatorship before the last hearing, which then finally, he was correct, did finally sign the paperwork to do. He thought, took a little time. It's clearly now proven. Yeah, it takes a little time, but they do seem to get it done at least. So uh, in fact, checking this doesn't seem like we should be putting a lot of worry on this yet. This is something that's legit. It's out there, but uh, let's give it some more time to see if Rosengard just ends this at some point in one of these future hearings uh, and uh, and so on. There was another thing she wanted to, if you're going to bring this up, uh, just to, to Thea who, who put that out there, there's a suspicious care plan that Jody has. The Hawaiian conservatorship is only uh, as it relates to Jody, and Jody has a sealed care plan. Uh, this is all confusing. Do, does this make sense to you? There's uh, talking about this care plan submitted pursuant to paragraph one, blah, 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 blah. And Miss Montgomery is currently preparing a comprehensive care plan with Miss Spears' medical team that will address all the issues raised by Miss Spears that relate to the conservatorship of the person under Miss Com- Montgomery's tenure as temporary conservatorship. Uh, does this worry you? Does this add anything else to the, the, the red flags at all for you? Uh, n- no. And I, I have been in I, DMing with the, uh, and I asked them to tell me what document it is at the bottom with the red underlining, because I vaguely remember reading a document like this. As you know, I read all the court documents that are filed in Brittany's case. I do vaguely remember this. And it seems like it was filed before the conservatorship was terminated, like during a time where Jamie and Jody were kind of going at each other a few months ago. And so since it was filed before the term, the conservatorship was terminated, um, there was, it was appropriate for a care plan to be filed, but what actually is filed now is not a care plan. It's called a termination plan, which listen, we could get into all the, we- the reasons why that's weird as well. But essentially from my talks with Christopher, it seems as though Christopher C. Melter, who's a friend to this channel as well, it seems as though um, this termination plan is just kind of like a list of um resources that Brittany has and that has been shown to the judge to show like look judge she's able to function on her own here's where she's going to be banking here's who's going to be taking care of her business and helping her do that here's who's going to be doing her taxes here's who's going to be helping her get business deals right like she's good to go she's all set and it's sort of just like a, a optional thing like if Brittany wants to change anything in that termination plan she's not held to it 
right? And so this care plan is a totally different thing as far as I understand. And this all seems like it relates to something that would have happened before the conservatorship was terminated and therefore is not really re relevant to us today. Again, I am still waiting for Thea to get back to me to confirm that this was filed before the conservatorship was terminated. Um, yeah, before, just want to confirm that. But once Got she it. does or they do, I'll be able to confirm, you know, this is just something from before and and this isn't relevant now. Okay, and that's what we, this was for. I'm glad to have this conversation so because I've seen a lot of people start tagging me into it, and I we, there was wasn't a, man, a lot of news today, and I thought, you know what, let's try to really debunk or fact check this. So there you go. I'm going to use the debunk because I don't have fact checked there, but yes, we sort of. <laughs> but I do want to say to Thea, like I do appreciate the work that they're doing here, and this is all stuff that needs to be looked at, like that other, you know, it's law bitch that on Twitter. It stuff needs to be looked at. So no like shame, no like debunk, like stop trying. Like I think they're great questions. And to hear me answer it, I'm still not even 100% sure on all of it. So I think we should keep asking these types of questions. Well said, I agree. Uh, so there you go on the first issue. And now I want to uh, pop on over to topic number two uh, about Sam Williams, uh, Hank Williams Jr.'s 24-year-old son. Um, this is a uh, so you you actually caught the story and you did you see the video did you play the video in your sort of video can you because I haven't seen the video I couldn't find I have it. the I've video seen, I can okay. send it to you so oh, I mean but do, I'll let you do it in your coverage and stuff but we have some images here I mean it was basically him silently holding up these cards correct correct and so this went up I, I'm in a conservatorship I want out and uh you know that's that's a discouraging thing to see but mm -hmm. then what he was said that his father and his half-sister and a lawyer had put him into the conservatorship abruptly in August 2020, only 55 days after his sister, who it is reported that he was very close to, tragically unexpectedly passed in a car accident. So she tragically unexpectedly passes a car accident in June 2020. And by August 2020, he was put into a conservatorship. Yeah, that's going to make a lot of conspiracy theorists go crazy. I mean, that that's see that see as we were talking about this, like, well, there, this one's complicated, right? Because what was it? A day or so later, he said, "I'm anyway, just kidding. It's a family matter. Let's please don't report and address this." Mm -hmm. And you know, you you even told me you're like, "No, my gut says something's off." And I told BJ, "I'm like, when BJ's guts off, I want her to report because that's why we love BJ. Put put it out there. This isn't out to be salacious or try to no. you know do anything nasty here. It's just well, it's there's hard, certain it's things hard to ignore ahead. someone, right? Saying help me, right? It's like what does that mean, right? Well, and the I went back and forth on whether, and that's why I even reached out to you. Like, are you going to report on this? Like, what's your gut? What's your you know instinct telling you? Because a lot of times we have to go by the seat of our pants on these issues. We don't have the facts, and I when I started covering Brittany, I did not have the facts, but I just had these feelings, and now those feelings have been confirmed. Um, I was the first person to publicly say that Brittany was being trafficked, and now she came out and did report that she was in fact trafficked in June, right? And if you remember, and a lot of your followers will remember this, back in 2019 when Brittany was in that Bridges to Recovery Center, right? She came out and she said, everything's fine. All is well. My family just needs time to deal. Back off. Leave me alone. Right? right. But what do we now know about that? We now know that when she was making that video, she was doing it inside of Bridges to Recovery, the place she was being held against her will and drugged against her will. We know that she was on lithium and being drugged against her will during that exact time that she came out and said all is well. And they could have killed her. I mean, listen, that's not even a conspiracy at this point. She said it. The only thing I could think of is that they were trying to kill me. So all that is going on in my mind when I see somebody that says, I want out of this conservatorship. And Andy, in the video, he puts the paper down below his mouth and he mouths the words, I want out to like to, to you know, put it in there like I want out. Yeah. And just two days later, he's saying, you know, this is a family matter. And I am very sympathetic to the fact that he believes it's a family matter. But as a lawyer and as an activist, it's not a family matter. And I have to say that it's not. Hank Williams Jr. and who, Sam's half-sister and this lawyer have gone to the court, uh, a taxpayer-funded institution, a public institution that is funded by our tax dollars, and brought it in front of a judge who is a public servant to do something with the power of the state and the government behind it.
And when you do something like that, it removes the situation from being a family matter because you've shown you can't handle it in your family. And you've now asked the public to get involved by bringing in the courts. And that's what's going on here. I understand he thinks it's a family matter. And listen, Andy, to be honest, a lot of this is going to get the conspiracy theorists riled up to you. I don't know that that is Sam on Twitter. And I do know that Sam's Instagram account follows Lou Taylor or followed Lou Taylor and she followed him and he's in Nashville and this is a country singer and she's Miss Country Music. I do know that, right? All these little sort of, we'll call them pink flags or waving. Pink and all I know is thing. one thing. He looked into that camera and said, I want out. And so I'm going to keep fighting and figuring out what we need to do to get him out. Yeah, it's look, and I think that's where the conversation comes about. Like, and I, I'll be honest, when I was telling BJ and I, it's like there's like Amanda Bynes, right? There's Michelle Nichols. There's a lot of these. It's like we start hearing this word conservatorship, and I think immediately we're all like thinking, Brittany, like, oh my God, we got to save this person. And I'll be honest, I, I'm like, part of me is like, well, are we supposed to? Like, is a, isn't a conservatorship like there to protect and like it's a private medical thing and maybe there's a mental breakdown. But in talking with BJ, like BJ reminded me, right? BJ, it's like, no, a conservatorship is for people who are like unable to like speak and move. It's usually like elderly people. It's like people who cannot make decisions for themselves. And yeah. there's this weird twist where Lou Taylor allegedly, I'm going to put my speculation on others, <laughs> have sort of figured out this weird way to latch on control. control, traffic, slavery, like is what it, let's use the words for what they are, like grab in and control these people who have money or access to money or libraries or things to say they're not mentally fit, they can't control themselves, therefore we should take over but in most conservatorships correct me if i'm wrong uh, most conservatives like it's like a, a clear cut like this person can't make any decisions yes let's, let's yeah and most conservatorships have uh are supposed to have a doctor who had who has a good understanding of someone's abilities now what we can tell from sam he's a country music artist himself so that means he memorizes lyrics, he writes lyrics, he plays the guitar, he's able to do all those things at once. He's able to go on tour, he can perform in front of audiences, the Grand Ole Opry, he can collaborate with other artists, Dolly Parton, he can post on Facebook or sorry, Instagram, he can figure out YouTube, he can keep all his cards in order and put them up in turn, he can tell a story. And so to me, that demonstrates that he is able to understand what's going on around him enough that he doesn't need to have any of his civil rights and liberties stripped. Now, a lot of people, Hank Williams Jr. fans, presumably, are saying this spoiled brat, entitled brat, he doesn't need to have this money anyway. He didn't earn it. That's fine if that's y'all's opinion. But the issue isn't just money. The issue is that what a conservatorship is on a legal basis is a stripping and a taking away of someone's human rights and civil liberties that are supposed to be inalienable. You are supposed to go through all kinds of less restrictive options. And this seems like maybe he was having some grief. Maybe he was having some kind of who knows what was going on 55 days after his sister passed away. I don't want to speculate on that, but it doesn't seem to me like less restrictive means were tried out. And this isn't just, it is about money. A lot of times with these lawyers, money, control, and the power. But for the conservative, for the victim, they are missing. Andy, me and you sitting here right now have more rights than this person. Why? That is so anti-American. And I like that you brought up Amanda Bynes and Nichelle Nichols. Because did you know that even a dementia diagnosis alone is not enough? to put someone in a conservatorship, they have to reach a certain legal stand, a legal um, threshold, which is unable to care for themselves. Un I'm not talking about, oh, can't cook a meal. Like, can you order McDonald's on DoorDash? Like, can you get food into your house and into your body some type of way? Like, that's the minimum, right? If you can, it doesn't matter if people don't like that you're eating McDonald's or ordering DoorDash every day. That is not the standard. And legally, we have got to start looking at, hold on, if they can put a seemingly healthy 24-year-old man who's an artist, who's famous, who can do all this stuff into a conservatorship, where is that about to lead us, Andy? Where is that about to lead us? Are our children going to e even be able to have opinions? Are they even going to be able to speak their minds about things without being worried that the state is going to intervene with their freedoms and liberties without due process, without a lawyer of their choosing? It's absolutely unconstitutional. And I absolutely hate that 
other lawyers are out there helping to traffic and enslave people because of money and control. Well said. I mean, that, that, what a beautiful uh, speech there. I mean, she's right. She's so spot on. And, and as you sit back and you think about this instance, it's like it's 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 so scary because let's say, you know, I think I've been guilty of it, right? With Amanda Bynes, I'm like, I was telling you, and I'll say it here publicly. I'm not, I'm not I got nothing to hide. I look at the, like the Amanda Bynes case and I was, I'm like, ah, she seems crazy. Like, seems like she needs a conservatorship. Like, oh my God, there's like, I see the face tattoo and I judge and I, I've, I've been that person, right? I'm like, maybe she needs this help. And the reality though is like, people should be allowed to fuck up their lives. Like, and Andy, these life. are artists. These are artists. Yeah, Don't you like, know artists? Yeah, I know people Miley with face Cyrus, tattoos. Kanye, Justin Bieber, they've all had breakdowns. I mean, we all, like every, a lot of humans do. Like, we are, the media tricks us in a way to make people look crazy. And then we see the way yes. the media tells them. And, and I, I've been guilty of it. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the viewers, you have too. The reality though is, and I think it's important, like, who cares if they screw up and go bankrupt and fuck up their lives? Like that's the Andy, beauty of a life. Like you get to that's make that what choice. bankruptcy laws are for. Oh, she's going to lose all her money. We have a whole set of laws for that. It's called bankruptcy. There's whole courts for that bankruptcy courts. You are not supposed to lose your human rights because you're not spending your money the way that daddy government wants you to period. You, I believe in total bodily autonomy across the board. I do not fall. We've talked about this before on either side of the political spectrum. I do not. I see a little bit of both sides and I kind of feel like I'm in the middle and I kind of just do my own thing hovering over here. And I believe that you have a fundamental liberty to do what you want with your body, including making mistakes, including things that might even hurt you. People go bungee jumping. That's kind of mm -hmm. stupid to me. Skydiving. People, people <laughs> do all kinds of things. People put put fangs in their teeth. That's kind of weird to me. But you know what? More power to you. If you got to have some fangs in your teeth, you go, girl. Who the hell are we to say, oh, someone's crazy, so they shouldn't spend their money like they get to they want. Well, they earned it. They were they were smart enough to earn the money. So yeah. why can't they spend it? Well, it's especially who are we? You have these people who are. It's like parents trying to control their adult kids, which to me is effed up in its own right. But it gets so much more shady, right? When there's money and catalog and fame and celebrity and all this stuff that then a parent can exploit and take you know take advantage of and cash in. Britney's you know proved that right, and that's what's so scary about all these instances. The Nichelle Nichols one, which I've been trying to get more into, and I'm going to do a story on eventually, but it's another one where it's like her son, right? It's her son has just sort of controlled it. I saw videos where like one of her friends came over to just say hi, and the son's like, "Get out of here," because it was like someone pre you know team con conservatorship. And you look at this stuff. And it's just, it's frightening. It's really, really frightening. And, and then it's even scarier because you look at like the system that's allowing this to keep happening and takes forever to sort of like, well, is it, you know, they, they force Britney to do it. Like we know this, like Britney sort of had to sign off, I guess, but they did, they, they lied, they tricked the doctor didn't really have the, the there was no real, if according to everything I've heard from and, and spoken to Sam Lutfi privately, personally and publicly, I think he's admitted this too, like there was no reason for her to be in there. And then they used her own kids to sort of dangle over here. Like, do you want to see your kids? Just sign this and play along. And I feel like, you know, Brittany was clearly someone, as she's admitted, like, who just was go along with the flow. Okay, whatever my family needs, I love them, whatever. And then you just sort of can get these people into this agreement. And then they're, they have no control over their lives. It's, it's a frightening, terrifying thing here. And so when Sam bring it back to the story. Like when Sam's saying, Oh, it's a family matter. Sorry. Don't talk about it. Yeah, no, I think we got to talk about it. I think you, you just, you just, you clearly want us to talk about it and uh, we should have the, you know, the opportunity to help you talk about it because I don't know who's telling you not to talk about it and what their motives are, because that's really where the scary part of this comes. And I mean, BJ, like, how do we solve this? Like, how do we, how, are there going to be better laws at some point that finally like clear up what conservatorships are supposed to be meant for? And I, I mean, People are saying Brittany is going to, you know, eventually get to that point that that case will open up a lot of doors. But do you do you see any positive in this of how we can sort of, you know, all unite together to make sure that we're pushing for a common good to, like, clear up these conservatorships and start cleaning house? So I believe I have the perfect solution. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone else saying it like this, but I, I am in a little bit of the minority opinion, and I don't believe that we need one single more law for conservatorships. All of the laws I've looked at closely and I haven't looked at all of them, but the ones I've looked at closely are, are not actually helpful and they wouldn't really help um, with the biggest problems. And the biggest problems are that judges are in on this racket. 
I believe the number one thing that would help not only in conservatorships, but in court corruption across the board is if they took some of this federal funding that they're trying to give to other things that are not going to help and instead put it toward putting a video camera that is live streaming in every single courtroom in the United States of America. And it is live streaming from the time that the court opens to the last time they bang the hammer each day and people can just watch. I think that's what's going to help here because I went to look for these conservatorship documents and wouldn't you know, anything with the uh, Hank Williams name on it is completely sealed. And I think that's unacceptable because celebrities on the one hand are getting special treatment. Oh, wh wh why? Why is it the case that one of these the most famous country music singers gets his stuff to be hidden? He is not above the law and whatever he did to put his son into a conservatorship is public knowledge and it should be public knowledge and it should be in the public interest the next court date should be public knowledge we pu the public has to start being aware of these things because when we are we can use our common sense even if you never went to law school for one day common sense says if the person is able to make their own decisions the person is obviously able to run a career and make money and earn income why are we stripping civil rights and liberties away from them without a trial it's all there's already laws in place, Andy. It's called the United States Constitution, the First Amendment right to free speech and freedom of association, the Fifth Amendment right to due process, the Sixth Amendment right to choose your own lawyer to fight against stuff like this before you ever get put into it. And judges across the country are ignoring the United States Constitution and nothing's happening to them because they have judicial immunity. Oh, so it's so frustrating, right? And because I go back and I'm like Reva Goats and all these judges that were involved in the Britney here, and like they're all basically immune and safe, as from what I've I've gathered. You can't go after judges; they're protected. It's it's a really scary thing where it's like I understand, I understand how tough it is to be a judge. Like it is, it's like a tough gig. You got to have sort of that, you know, decision making process without fear of any, any repercussion in a way. But yeah, there needs to be better accountability on our own judges and everything you're saying. It's spot on. It's it's so crazy that we don't allow it. I mean, the reason they say you can't have a camera or even in a case like this or Britney's, right? The reason it's sealed is, well, this is private medical information, you know, BJ. So it's none of our business. Uh, like, is that really true in all legal sense? Like, does that does that hold weight in other areas or is it is that a fair sort of argument back of like, yeah, well, do you really want to live stream someone's like medical history that's under a sealed, is that, does that help them? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. I do think that there should be some um, nuance to what is being live streamed. So for example, uh, if there's very young children involved, I think there is like a little bit of leeway that you can say, you know what, children are going to be in here. Like we don't want to really broadcast them talking about, you know, some crime or trauma. But I think for the most part, I mean, yeah, if you're taking away someone's ability to sign a check. I mean, look, Wendy, I don't know if you heard about this. Wendy Williams just had her bank account frozen today. I heard, I heard today. That. Where does it end? Where does it stop? So could mine get frozen tomorrow because people don't like what I'm saying or doing? Listen, I'm no Wendy Williams fan. Don't get me wrong. But even Wendy Williams should be allowed to spend the money that Wendy Williams earned. And it's kind of like it raises a larger question. Let's say someone is on is dementia. Let's say someone has some scary stigmatized thing like, I don't know, schizophrenia. Shouldn't they be able to just spend their money? I don't. Un it just doesn't make sense to me why this is only a rich people problem. Because you think that the government is going out under the bridges and telling people that are, uh, have dementia under the bridge or schizophrenia under the bridge that they can't make choices? No, it's only rich people and people don't have sympathy for rich people. And for a long time, I didn't either. Then I started to realize, well, rich people, what does that even mean? If they don't even have access to their money and if they're actually being targeted because of it, wh where, what are we doing? And why do we why is it so easy for us to make excuses for why it is OK for the courts to abuse citizens in the country that the citizens are paying the courts? Why is it so easy for us, us to make excuses? Well, maybe he this or that. Well, maybe he has something this or that. No, we need to start with why is a court taking away someone's fundamental human civil rights and liberties? Let's start there. 
and then get to the maybes way down the line. That's kind of how I feel about it. I mean, I get real worked up about it. You know, I get on my soapbox about <laughs> No, I love it. I mean, but it's it's what we need. We need more of that because I might when I, I still I'm always impressed hearing the story when you fought Lou Taylor and you got the job at the law firm. And the law firm like he's like, Yeah, you have permission, go ahead, cool. And then fast forward, you know, Lou uses her you know, cronies to like and, and and use your law firm be like, so wait a second, uh, who's this? Oh, can you? And then they immediately took the money over what was right. When in the reality is mm. you'd hope and think, right? The legal system, these law firms would like be dying to have a, someone like a BJ, right? A, a, so when someone called you, right? Today's Aaron Brockovich, I think was what the term was. Like, she's just out there to do what's right, right? And uh, But the sad reality is no, these law firms want money. They don't care about what's right most often. More often, it's so hard to find an honest lawyer. So I appreciate no, in someone my like conversation. Christopher Melcher. With who's another one who's out there like fighting for, great. for like you know media coverage and all this stuff like why if police have body cameras exactly why can't we have j body cameras on judges it feels like it's the next logical thing it protects them it protects us it that, that's what's so frustrating like when they when they fight back against no there shouldn't be a camera in the courtroom to me it's like but we're protecting you as well judge and you lawyer because we want to make sure you did it correctly and there's no, you know, question. And it's as to also what so classist. Like every fast food worker in the country has to be on video recording from the time they clock in till the time they leave. These like low wage like jobs, which I've worked many, many of, you're always being surveilled. But it's like the people who are supposed to be upholding democracy are too good to be on a camera. Excuse me. What? I don't like it. And I understand, you know, traditionally there were no court, there were no cameras in courtrooms, but that's because cameras didn't exist. Right. The stuff that they do in courtrooms now is from like 1555 in England. Like y'all need to get with it. The fact you have to call somebody who's quite literally a human trafficker, your honor does not sit right with me. And I'm a lawyer. I don't like it. Why do I have to call a human trafficker your honor? Where's the honor in that? We really need to look into some of these antiquated court practices, starting with the camera situation. No, I think that's the first thing that we all should figure that out. We all need to push that harder. But I understand why they wouldn't. There's so much corruption and so many that will probably do their best to avoid that so they can. Yep. Not even probably. Even, I'm sure a lot of it's not even corruption. I'm sure there's also just laziness of like. And I don't stupidity. Do that. Yeah, I don't do that. And I don't. Ugh, you don't do the paperwork on that. There's probably so many reasons why they don't. It just adds more pressure and work to them. But the reality is that job is so important and needs full transparency. And there, and currently, it, there isn't one. There, it's also, you're, you make a point, like, because I worry about, like, well, yeah, how do you avoid medical records or children and things? But yeah, you could easily set it up to have, like, a button where it's like, all right, we are now muting the camera because we are going to discuss the sealed portion of the document, you know? Okay, like, say it out loud. There's, there's instances where you can say, okay, this is why we've turned the camera off to protect blah, 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 blah. Okay, the camera has been turned back on. Like, it's very easy to, like, even that that excuse to me isn't even one at all either because there's ways to with technology today it's so easy to set that up and make that it costs nothing every you can get a webcam for thirty dollars yep <laughs> it's like enough is enough uh so I, I think that's a that's a brilliant first step uh so i i love that and back to just to wrap up the hank the, the andy williams or sorry it's the hank williams jr it's sam williams yeah it's a it's a tough one because it's like as i was reading in here it's like it's he he makes a a, a plea there. He says, you were talking about it briefly, but I just want to make sure people understood the story. Um, I've been quite a long time now. I want this, I want out of this and I don't mind people knowing they took my grief process, my spirit, my money, my car, my home and everything possible in order to protect me. Well, I need protection from them. Uh, I've, I've worked my broken heart to quit since my dear Katie left for home. I do not deserve this. It's a scary step, but I don't see what else to do here. I'm ashamed of my family and embarrassed. I am beyond done. I have my spirit back. Get me out, please. When you see a yep. message like that, like, how do you not react and be like, oh, and he's you crazy, know, BJ. You know, he didn't just sit it's down and decide thing. that day to do that. He thought on that. He thought on this before he did it. You know, he did. You know, it was building up, building up building up and he says it right here i'm embarrassed this is embarrassing they stole everything from me my own family and then you know the people who don't understand conservatorships or freedom started putting in their you know comments and i guess he probably got spooked and was like this is going to be really hard to fight people aren't going to and he did say this too in, in a subsequent live that he did on youtube that i have a few snippets of 
he said, you know, my situation is not as bad as Britney's. Basically, he was like, you know, that was, you know, nobody's here. Nobody's watching me. Nobody's this and that. And I want to I want to kind of caution people. Not every conservatorship is going to be as bad as Britney's. That was extreme. But that doesn't mean that it's okay to take away someone's constitutional rights. These laws from conservatorships and the probate courts came from chattel slavery. We used probate courts to hear trials of slavery, human ownership, and they use the same exact mechanisms today to own the rights of other humans. It's unacceptable and it's deplorable. It doesn't matter that it's not as bad as this person and that person. We have to take, you know, the case by case scenario. That's exactly what this is. This is a different case, but it's still unacceptable for people to own other humans' rights, especially in a situation where this guy seems to be able to take just fine care of himself. He said it himself, nobody's here with me. Nobody watches me all day. I'm by myself. So if he's by himself, why in the hell does somebody else need to own his rights? Great question. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. And it, it, when, you, when I read that and I see this, how well he's even writing it, like he doesn't seem crazy at all. And the reality is, even if he is crazy, it's still not right. That's why I think I'm the crazy. biggest stigma. Yeah, we're all crazy. Like, I, and I, I have to admit it. Like, I've, I've seen some of these people and I'm gone, oh, Amanda Bynes is crazy. Hell, back in the day when Britney was shaving her head, I fell for the media too. I was like, oh man, it seems like she's going crazy. You, I was too young and, and ignorant and didn't really understand like what that woman was going through between her divorce and the kids and the parents, her crazy family. They are crazy. You, you, And the media, what the paparazzi was doing to her, that we sort of were just like, it was just like blood game blood sport out there with paparazzi trying to catch her uh it was it's just awful the mental break that can put on anybody that doesn't make her lesser or deserve to be in control of, you know her family in control of her life uh it's sad we got we got to take away the stigma of like oh well conservatorships are for crazy people no they're not they're, they're for people who can't make decisions whatsoever and to be honest crazy people can make decisions and plenty of crazy people i'm talking kanye west but just all these plenty of rock stars across the history have been theoretically crazy and managed to still keep their labels and businesses alive uh, and no the legal the legal threshold that you have to meet in order to be qualifying for a conservatorship is not crazy there's no box that says the person's crazy there's no box that says the person got a face tattoo there's no box that said the person ran for president you have to be substantially unable to care for yourself. You have to be unable to form your mind to know that you need to take a shower every so often and eat food. Like everybody probably knows somebody who's had Alzheimer's or dementia. And there is a point that people get to where they're like, you know, drinking mouthwash and stuff. I'm, I, this is not to be disrespectful. It's just, a, I know somebody who used to do that, right? Once she got to the later stages. And at that point, someone probably does need to step in and make sure that your lights stay on and that your, you know, food is coming to the house or right. maybe that your medical needs are attended to. This is a 24 year old man who was going through grief. He was going, he was mourning the loss of an immediate family member. I'm going to tell you one thing. When my dad died in 2017, if the state would have walked into my apartment, they might've would have taken me. I had stuff piled up. I had trash I needed to take out. My hair was a mess. I didn't shower for probably weeks. That is normal when you're grieving someone. And I'm so glad that I had the freedom and the luxury and the privilege to go through that mourning process on my own. And it took me a couple years to get out of it. But I did. And look at me now. I mean, some people might say, girl, you need a conservatorship. <laughs> but, <laughs> Trust me, I get the same thing. But exactly. But we're you know, to screw ups. let people make mistakes. <laughs> let people be human beings. We are so obsessed with controlling other people these days, controlling their thoughts, controlling their opinions, controlling what they wear, what they say, where they go. Chill out, y'all. Let people just live a little bit. We don't need to take control of people's lives and bodies like this. This is a slippery, slippery slope. I'm telling you, if we don't get a rain on this 15, 20 years from now, everybody's going to qualify for a conservatorship. Oh, she th she thought something different about vaccines. Lock her up.
take her rights. I'm telling you, it's getting out of hand. I wasn't going to make you go there, but I'll go there. It's it's also (laughs) speech. It's also censorship. It's all connected, and we got to protect our basic civil right. Like our, it's like what this country is about. Those are that. It's a liberal thing to like want to support art and censorship and things. It's it's so weird how divided politics have come on on this issue of censorship and the freedoms that we have it's like I, I feel like i guess i am becoming conservative for trying to defend basic rights we have in this country it's, well you're it's, not like becoming conservative andy it's more people <laughs> trying to put you in a box yeah. okay if you have this opinion that means that you also have all these other opinions in this box false i reject your notion i reject i reject you people trying to put me in a box i ain't nothing but a free thinker And sometimes I get caught up in the wash too. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I get caught up in it where I'm like, oh yeah, maybe we should do this for safety and this and that. And I have to really kind of, whatever you want to call it, pray, meditate, think hard, thought experiment. I have to think like, is this other people's opinion that has kind of hijacked and sort of inceptioned Mm -hmm. my frontal lobe? Because a lot of times it is. Common sense is common. Just just check in with yourself or your God or whoever, whatever it is, y'all, because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there that want to make you think their ideas are your ideas. And it's just fine if yours are different. Yeah. And, they're, and, and we're so against I've 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 completely rebelled against it now. But it's like because I like I was liberal and I moved to Florida, I got surrounded by conservatives and I quickly learned, oh, wait, they're not all racist, hateful people like I was taught in California. Oh, wow. They're, like my mailman voted for Trump, but doesn't like them and just wanted to for tax purposes. Like, oh, wow, I've, there's nuance to it. Wow. I never would have thought like that's the reality of America. Like when you actually get out of an echo chamber, you can learn and see people, especially when you leave Hollywood and you learn like, wow, people have different just opinions and viewpoints and it doesn't define them as the way a lot of people want to define you. But now in today's culture, it's us or them. You're on my side or you're on the other side. And if you're yeah. not on my side i'm against you and i have to fight you and i'm at war with you and how dare you support this person why haven't you condemned this person and oh my it's like yes, a weird what is that mentality. about i don't i don't understand this mob think like mob rule is never good like it's leave just, me alone and get off like, my channel Ugh. <laughs> it's bizarre but it's it's great it's all connected in a way and it's frustrating it's scary but this is a very serious issue that it doesn't seem like anyone's gonna fight it like you know, this is slavery, guys. This is the trafficking. I, you, you call it trafficking. I just don't think enough people really understand what that is, sadly. Yeah. The sad reality is like trafficking is a, t- a horrific thing, but let's use what it is. It's also slavery. And it's yep. like, I know that's a, a, a word, hard word to use because of the history of it, but it's what's happening now. And we get, that's, it's never okay in any scenario. And we got to put an end to this. And to know that there are people, I'm putting my speculation up, there are people allegedly like Lou Taylor who are out there like connected to so many of these things. I'm sorry, Lou, you're connected to too much of this shit. There's something, yep. there's something weird here and we're allowed to question you. And you really don't want people to question you. That's the other huge pink flag that you send off there but i'm t- the kardashians now connected to andy will like what is going on with her bj it is scary I mean, and no one's it's, doing I'm, shit i'm glad you brought her up because <laughs> the good the good guys the people who are usually fighting for freedom and liberty and kind of everybody do what you want and kind of thing a lot of times <laughs> we get we get sort of lost in the in the weeds of like oh that person's not on my, our side or our team or they have a different opinion than me they oh who should be president or whatever i promise you one thing the bad guys do not give a shit uh, do not give a bleep <laughs> who you voted for they will work together across political aisles to get corruption and greed and all that stuff they will work together and it is high time that we have to start doing it and and even in the comments and stuff sometimes i'll see like these snide remarks like oh you're just figuring out blah 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 yes i am but i'm here now and i have figured it out so unless you want to do something else other than just demean us for not figuring it out until 2021 then go away right like let's work together because the bad guys are working together the bad guys are working together and they have always and they will continue to yeah and the rich and powerful do it as well and they want to control yep. us all and so yeah you can call them and the they do too, they do control it all they control it all they they remove who they want to remove they it's a it's a very it's a very slippery slope we're in and uh yeah questioning it talking about it shouldn't put you on the other side. And if somebody puts you on their side for asking questions or having, trying to have discourse about it, 
yeah, don't don't let them. You're you're probably on the better side questioning and just come on over here. Go on over to BJ's channel. There are plenty of places you can find to keep the conversations going. Uh, and, and what a beautiful conversation this was. I see all your comments. I'm gonna get to them in a second. I just want to wrap up this video and I want to thank BJ and I want to make sure we plug BJ. Here's her link tree I found, which has all of everything in there, right? YouTube, merch, yes. etc. Patreon. You can support court documents, TikTok, etc. I'm putting it out there if you guys haven't already. Uh, I'll put this in the description as well. Uh, go support her on all her channels, especially on YouTube, and uh, go over there and check out her. You have a video tonight about this that you'll be premiering? I do have a video premiering around 6 p.m. Eastern about this, and it does include the video, um, includes a video that Brittany also made while she was in Bridges to Recovery, and just kind of like a lot of the stuff I said here, but there's a little bit more, you know, because there's that video, and you'll be able to see it on there, too. Love it. I love seeing, look, look at this. It's growing. Are you, are you proud of this channel, BJ? Look at this. This is good. Yeah, I'm almost it's, at 20,000 20, subscribers. Let's get, can we get her to 20,000 subs surreal. right now? Can we make it happen right now? Come on. That's, oh she's my not God. that far that away. That would be nuts. Go go over there right now. I want to- I wanna, You made my two, heartbeat fast. We have oh 2,000 people happen. watching. Cut, what the hell? We can do that. We've done, we've done bigger. Uh, can we get her over that hump of 20,000 uh, over that surprise witness? Go hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell for all alerts over there and show her some love. Because, look, we need more BJs in the world. Honestly, there's a lot of people who will not even come on this channel. They're afraid. I can't be associated with Andy. But I'm so grateful that she gives me a shot. She talks to me here. And we get to talk it out. And we don't always have to agree on things. But I yeah. love that she is open and honest. That's what I try to be always. And just have And I can point right? to Tea. specific things where you've changed my mind on stuff i think i've been able to persuade you on some yep. stuff so i think that collaborating in this way and just like you said just talk it out what is your feeling what is my feeling what is your expertise what is mine what do you know how can we put it together and come to closer to the truth because that's really all i care about the truth and justice i i mean the truth is is naked if they're using it against people right but the truth and justice. So let's just keep on fighting toward that. Oh, and yeah, freedom. Let's add freedom. Unless it's, you know, Jamie Lynn's truth. That's a whole separate whole thing. <laughs> I'm talking about the truth. <laughs> the truth. Not lies that uh, people call the truth. Lies I should have said. Uh, oh my God. That Yeah, anyway. So stay tuned. We'll do a book review at some point, I hope. And uh, I love talking to BJ. And look who's here real quick as we wrap out. Steph will be here as BJ leaves, but make sure they got to say hello as well. Uh, as we do all that again, go support BJ. I'm going to wrap up this video right this second but if you're watching live don't go anywhere we're going to read through your comments we're going to get steph's reactions and talk a lot of, a lot more news thank you guys for watching if you haven't already hit the subscribe to all these channels uh that surprise witness get her to twenty thousand. we're so close uh so steph, close. The nerd uh popcorn planet hit it all uh if you're watching live we're coming right back in literally 10 seconds i'm just putting this here so i can trim it if you missed the whole show go become a member hit join and watch the whole replay whenever you want in the members only playlist on the main channel page